الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم said بدأ الإسلام غريبا وسيعود غريبا كما بدأ فطوبى للغرباء إسلام when we say here Islam we're talking about the coming of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم it began very strange to the people strange they don't know of this much of this new ways before وسيعود غريب and it will come back in the future strange again كما بدأ the way it started in the beginning just exactly the same way then he said فطوبى للغرباء good news to those who are strangers in, the, in all this time strange what's strange strange is different to weird strange doesn't mean that it's wrong it just means that it's unknown to the people's uh, customs and traditions and knowledge that they've always had it's strange but interesting I wonder if I was wrong all this time and this strange religion is the right one it's just strange meaning unknown for Islam began like that we know the story in the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. All you have to do is to read it, and you'll know what I mean. And today, our ta- now in the millennium, we have the same situation. Al-Islam is gharib, the same way it began. There's one extra thing that's worse about our time. That it's not only strange to the non-believers, it's become strange to different Muslims. It's become strange to different Muslims. And the Muslims have divided. And they are strangers to one another. Um, the other day, um, this brother came from Palestine and is now living here. I think it was Ramadan time. I don't remember what action we did in Taraweeh prayer. And this brother never knew, never heard of this action before in his life. Never been taught it. I don't remember what it was. But the, the moral of the story is that he said, I've never known this. From ever since I was born. He's probably about 24 years old. So he said, I never knew this before. First time I ever hear it. And it was something simple, actually, which I can't remember, as I said. So it was very strange to him. And we hear this frequently, actually. In my life, I've heard it frequently, many, many times. When I was born here, and when I went to Lebanon in 1990, till 1994, came back over here, and still we hear Muslims. And to me, I'm thinking, how could you not know this? You know, it's, it's known to the Muslims, but to them it's very strange. And this day and age, listen, living now in the Western world, you can't get any stranger than this look, the beard. Can't get any stranger now than the veil of the woman. The niqab is now finished, gone. That's like really extreme to them. The beard is now second and the practices that we do, praying, strange. Holding on to your five daily prayers is strange even to some Muslims and weird. What's this new religion, they say? And what was already dealt with a long time ago, because values change today, now everybody is re-exploring Islam 14 centuries ago and saying, ah, look at that. Look how bad this religion is. After they've changed the values today. You can't do that. You change the values and you say, look how wrong this religion is. You just made up something and now you want to make the religion look like it's wrong and strange and weird so the religion has started again strange as it was before and the Rasul Sallallahu told us you will have four transitions from a proper Khilafa on the Quran and Sunnah Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi then it will become a, a distorted one Muslims fighting each other then it will become a um, a Mulkan Jabriyan which is a dictatoriate kind of uh, leadership of Khilafah and then which is now with there's lots of dictatorships in in a lot of the Muslim countries a lot of the Muslim world and if a person just speaks of Islam in some places he's imprisoned immediately called a terrorist and called an extremist and so on and so forth then he said ثم تعود الخلافة على منهاج النبوة Khilafah will return back leadership of the Muslims to the way the Prophet ﷺ began it and that is yet to happen that is yet to happen the last Khilafah we had was the Ottoman Empire so this is another sign that is inevitably coming but the thing is the Muslims will return the nation of, of Islam and its proper teaching its proper form as it began will come back and will fill the world with peace and justice just as it was filled with injustice and tyranny and that's the time of Al-Mahdi 
So, the religion will begin Gharib as it started before, and this is today, one of the minor signs before the major signs come. As time passes, my dear brothers and sisters, after these minor signs develop, plots and plans will be carried out by enemies of, of this religion, outside of it and within it, outside of it and within it. And this is among the greatest minor signs that you can look at because Rasul Sallallahu said, Oh my Lord, don't destroy my ummah with a common plague that destroys them all. Don't do that. And Allah said, you have, you have that dua accepted. I will never destroy your ummah with a plague. He said, Oh Allah, do not let an enemy from outside of them to take control of them. And Allah said, you have that. So why do we have today the enemy from outside controlling the Muslims and putting them down? Because Allah did not give the Prophet ﷺ the third dua, which was, except if they fight each other within, I will not allow, I will not protect them from that. I've given them my guidance; it's up to them to follow it. And then Allah then sent the ayah down saying, "Inna Allah la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusim." Allah will not change the state of a people until they change change their own state first. So when we changed our state, the outside enemy took control of us. That's what's happened today, and this is among the greater minor signs as well. Uh, we mentioned the hadith last week. The nations of the world will gather against you. Rasul Sallam named eighty nations. The 80 nations are going to come up very soon. I'm going to explain it. But right now, the, 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 this, this word, as the Prophet said, تكالب. He said, تتكالب. Oh, تتداعي. تتداعي. تتداعي means they invite one another, like, like تتكالب, like beasts calling each other and becoming wild over you. And today, they are wild and in many places in the world over the Muslims. You just don't hear much about it in the media anymore. This is our state. And you know that soon something's going to happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only knows when this is going to happen. I want to stop here for a minute, brothers and sisters, and, and just analyze something with you together. We hear of all these different ideologies that are coming up now. Atheism, Satanism, you know, there used to be capitalism and communism and all of those. Fascism, uh, socialism, all these different isms that are coming up. They're all religions. They're all religions. What I mean by religion is the word deen in Arabic means way of life. They're all ways. Anything you hold on to it as a system in your life, it's most important, put it in priority, is your religion. That's your deen. A lot of them of the past showed up and they faded away. They went. Like communism's dying out, fascism's dying out, Nation, well, you know, uh, a bit of nationalism is going away. Capitalism is still here now with us. Atheism is quite new. And there's many others that are coming up. And these are all to me, wallahi, are just temporary. They're all going to die out. There's no power for them that really holds them. You will see that really the power that is really happening, the ones who really have authority, are actually the two major religions, which are Christianity and Judaism. Because if you look at any of them, any of these movements, behind them, the authority, the power, represent these religions. And then you have Islam. These three major religions, brothers and sisters, are still there and they've always been there and their authority the power on top of them represent those religions those are the little things that you see atheism and so all those other isms that you see now they don't really have strong authority on the upper higher rank and if you look at it carefully today the sifting between the Muslims is happening already the hypocrites the half Muslims the Muslims who make up their religion as they please, the so-called moderate Muslims of today, and you even find people who are representing Islam in, in a high ranks in this new meaning of moderate Muslim. There's a new word now, a new terminology for moderate Muslim, and there are a lot of Muslims who are going within that wave at the moment. You can see it, especially among the teenagers. Especially among the teenagers. If I want to win the battle, I don't fight you. I'll just take your children and get them to my way. So a lot of the children today, teenagers, have got this misunderstanding of Islam. That Muslim Islam is like every other religion. You've got to separate spirituality between everything else and everything else in the world. And well, I've heard it with my ears. Many teenagers have said this to me. A lot of teenagers ask me, can I wear the cross for fashion? 
It's because it's good looks. And they're getting him really involved with his materialism. It's a very materialistic world. You get involved a lot into the materialistic world. Why the materialism? Because it's the best method of keeping your mind distracted away from God. It's the best method. Because the opposite, the opposing enemy of our deen is materialism. Once he, it's of, of any proper deen was materialism. This is what made the Jews lose their way, what made the Christians lose their way, and this is what it's making a lot of Muslims lose their way. Materialism. That's what we're in today, really. It's a war of ideology, and the obstacle or distraction is materialism.